Hello, everyone. Since you have all come to visit our channel again, let us continue our journey into the old age today. This time, we will have a trip to the Eocene for you all. This is one of the most interesting periods in paleontology. There you will meet the distant ancestors of mankind and the unique monsters that have already perished. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. The Earth in the Eocene Period In paleontological terms, the Eocene is a period that began 56 million years ago and ended 33.9 million years ago. The period before that was the Paleocene, which immediately followed the extinction of large species such as dinosaurs. Species diversity? which has been severely lost during the mass extinction between the Cretaceous and Paleogene, gradually recovered during the Paleocene. The era destroyed not only dinosaurs and large reptiles, but also other species. On the flip side, with the demise of their main rivals, mammals and birds had the opportunity to become the new rulers of the biosphere. By the beginning of the Eocene, the loss of biodiversity due to mass extinctions had been recovered to a significant degree. This was possible because, among other things, by the end of the preceding Paleocene, a mild, warm climate prevailed across the globe, and conditions were stable. The temperature difference between the equator and the poles was about one half that of today. The climate of the Arctic and Antarctic regions corresponds to the temperate zone in today's global climate classification and glaciers never descended below the tops of the mountains. The climate of the area, now classified as temperate, was almost subtropical, with tropical rainforests growing below 45 degrees latitude. This means that if the Earth's climate were the same as it was in the Eocene, Korea, Turkey, Italy, Spain, and most of the United States would be covered with jungles. The reason the climate was like this may have to do with the fact that in the early Eocene, there were no cold currents flowing in the oceans, only warm currents. 46 million years ago, the Earth's climate was very warm, but it cooled somewhat during the next 4 million years. By the end of the Eocene, however, the Earth warmed again. While the map of the Earth in the Eocene is similar to what we know, there are some minor differences. For example, at the beginning of the Eocene, the continents of Australia and Antarctica were connected and still one continent. About 45 million years ago, they separated into two continents. On the contrary, the North and South American continents were separated. There were several islands in what is now Central America. Europe too was like a huge archipelago, but the islands that made up the archipelago gradually grew and collided with one another forming the Alps and the Carpathians. The Indian subcontinent began to merge with the Asian continent, and the Himalayas appeared at the boundary between the two subcontinents. Simply put, this was the Earth during the Eocene period. Now it is time to move on to the most intriguing and wonderful animals of all. This is the story of the extinct animals. And then come the animals that are still alive today. The World of Beasts and Birds In the Eocene, mammals and birds fully occupied the ecological position vacated by the extinction of dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and marine reptiles. These animals were diverse in size and ecology. In South America, giant flightless birds have taken the ecological position previously occupied by dinosaurs. The Forest Rachidae family of birds the forest Rachidae birds had only emerged in the Eocene, but by the Eocene, they were already quite prosperous and could be divided into several groups. Forest Rachos look somewhere between an ostrich and a dinosaur. In the view of some researchers, the bird was a cruel predator, hunting down and capturing its prey with its powerful legs and pecking it with its huge beak. Other researchers believe that the large forest rakos were carrion eaters, 
feeding on the flesh of animals that have already died. In either case, we know that this giant bird appeared in the Eocene, passed through several eras, and thrived until the Pleistocene. In North America, there were birds of the family Bathornithidae, somewhat similar to the forest Rachidae. In Europe, the new ecological status was given to a bird called Gastornis, which seems to have been the largest and most dangerous ground animal in the area it inhabited. A species close to Gastornis, Diatrima, also succeeded in conquering other parts of the globe, especially Asia. According to researchers, it was during the Eocene that primates finally came into their own, that is, became what they are today. Now, look at Purgatorius, which lived in the Paleocene, before the Eocene. It is still more like a squirrel than a monkey. By the Eocene, however, Darwinius and Ardipithecus, which lived at that time, already somewhat resemble today's lemurs. The first ancestor of Hominidae is known to have emerged in the early Oligocene, which followed the Eocene. Propleopithecus Propleopithecus may have already appeared by the end of the Eocene. All of the higher monkeys, including us humans who would eventually appear, came from the species of Propleopithecus or a similar species. In general, the Eocene species that researchers have discovered include many of the ancestors of today's various mammals. For example, the large carnivore Andrusarchus was a primitive ungulate, and the sea was home to the Bacillosaurus, the first ancestor of today's whales. By the way, what is interesting is that it was fear that drove them to the sea. The semi-aquatic Indohyus, about the size of a raccoon, was a transitional animal until the older terrestrial predators evolved almost completely into whales and Bacillosaurus-like animals. They may have initially simply hid in the water to escape predators larger than themselves, but eventually they began to spend most of their time in the sea. More Ethereum, the ancestors of today's elephants, is a very interesting animal that lived in North America. Compared to its descendants, it was not boastful in size or weight, and looked like a taper or a wild boar. Genetically, however, it was the first appearance of an elephant or similar species. On the other hand, there were many mammals that became extinct without leaving any direct descendants. For example, the Amphicyonidae, also known as bear dogs, appeared just in the Eocene, and were one of the most abundant animal species for 40 million years. The majority of them were mighty animals, able to hunt virtually any prey. One of the most interesting Eocene land animals is the Brontotherium. The mighty beast, reaching a height of 2.5 meters to the shoulder, is thought to be a relative of today's rhinoceros. In fact, it had two horns. They were elongated nasal bones. This animal apparently lived over a very large area of the North American continent and suddenly became extinct 30 million years ago, just after the end of the Eocene. The reason for the extinction is still unknown. One theory attributes it to climate change and the conversion of deep forests to grasslands. Another theory holds that Brontotherium perished as a victim of a plague that spread among animals. The End of the Eocene As the Eocene drew to a close, the world began to change again. Cold currents were created in the oceans, one of which completely surrounded Antarctica, which settled into its present position. There, the ice cap began to form. There began the formation of glaciers that never melted, which affected not only the climate, but also the height of the sea level. Sea levels began to drop. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. Some reptiles and amphibians that could not adapt to the cold weather became extinct during the Eocene-Oligocene transition. On the contrary, the mammals and birds that were to become the true protagonists of life are living on peacefully. And the first large beasts 
as big as dinosaurs began to appear. But we must wrap things up quickly. We will leave it for next time to talk about the wonderful animals that appeared in the Oligocene. If, of course, it is interesting to you. Please, subscribe and like our channel. Don't forget to share this video on social networking sites and post your comments. Please let us know if you would like to see a sequel on this topic. Please keep your notification bell turned on so that you will not miss any interesting videos. With that, goodbye for a while. See you again soon. Bye!